Hi, I'm your Minna Van Dyken, MD. I'm a surgeon by trade, but my true passion is helping people like you obtain optimum health via a whole food plant-based lifestyle. Today, I want to talk about the gut-brain connection. Yeah, you heard me right. There's a connection between the gut and the brain. More specifically, I want to discuss the connection between the gut and autism spectrum disorders, or ASD. What exactly is ASD? It's a spectrum of disorders and is classified by a range of symptoms, including decreased verbal communication and social skills, outright withdrawal, insistence on sameness in their daily routine, engagement in repetitive behaviors, and heightened response to social stimuli. ASD affects one in every 68 children. Boys outnumber girls five to one. What's interesting is many children with autism spectrum disorder, some studies quote up to 70%, have a disturbance in GI function. Any clinician that works with autism spectrum disorder children can tell you there's a link between ASD and GI dysfunction. Why is this? Well, scientists are finding increasing evidence that gut microbiota populations may influence some neurobehavioral disorders. In other words, they're finding evidence of a gut-brain connection. They're calling it the gut microbiome brain axis. So let's back up and briefly talk about how we develop our specific microbiome. Serious bacterial colonization of our GI tract begins at birth, when we're inoculated with a complex mixture of bacteria given to us by our mothers. When we're born, our microbiome is almost identical to that of our mother. But here's where it gets interesting. After one year, a unique and complex microbiome develops. We know from this there's a critical window for microbiome development which has lifelong ramifications on our overall health. Scientists have proven the connection between the microbiome and behavioral disorders in mice, but only recently have we begun to examine the connection in humans. There's a certain bacteria called Clostridium tetani. If it's found in the colon, it increases the risk and severity of autism spectrum disorders. I know, sounds crazy, but we do know that this specific bacteria produces a neurotoxin that's able to reach the brain via the vagus nerve. Vagus, as in V-A-G-U-S, not as in Las Vegas. This is a nerve that travels from the GI tract directly to the brain. Once the neurotoxin reaches the brain, it impacts neurotransmitter release, which precipitates a whole range of behavioral deficits. It influences it so much that giving antibiotics that work against many bacteria alleviates many of the stereotypical bad behavior seen in autism spectrum disorders. Following this groundbreaking study, multiple others followed, demonstrating the link between dysbiosis, or an altered microbiome, and autism spectrum disorders. The list of bacteria that were found in high proportions began to grow. Clostridium boltiae, Clostridium histolyticum, Desulfibrio, Bacteroides vulgatus, Beta proteobacteria, Bacteroides genera, Allostipes, Acromantia muncinophilia, Sudorella. What we found were reduced in ASD spectrum disorder children was Prevotella, Coprococcus, Velomelanaceae, Firmicutes, and Proteobacter. This leads us to the question. How can we modulate the microbiome to treat or prevent autism spectrum disorders? There are a few strategies that have been shown in the literature to be effective. The first tactic, and arguably the largest, most powerful tactic, is diet. Considerable evidence exists linking contrasting diets to gut microbiota changes and subsequent health effects. Multiple studies have shown that a gluten-free, casein-free diet can be used to treat core and peripheral behavioral disorders in certain ASD patients. This diet appears to favorably influence gut microbiota populations and intestinal barrier function. The second tactic, prebiotics. Prebiotics include carbohydrates such as inulin and other oligosaccharides. Certain mixtures of prebiotics have been shown to reduce salivary cortisol secretion, which is indicative of a suppressed neuroendocrine response, which increases the subject's attention span. Those are two behavioral domains impacted in patients with ASD. The third tactic, probiotics. Currently, approximately one-fifth of physicians advocate probiotic use in ASD children. Benefits of probiotics include improvement of host immunity, restoration of normal bacterial colonies, stabilization of the intestinal mucosal barrier predominantly due to mucin production. This reduces the likelihood of bacterial spread and absorption of harmful bacterial metabolites. The fourth tactic is activated charcoal. 
There are a few studies to suggest that activated charcoal suppresses the growth of antibiotic-resistant intestinal bacteria. Because of this, decreased toxins are produced by gut bacteria, which in turn leads to decreased injurious effects on the brain. This benefit is short-lived, though. The symptoms of ASD are likely to return once charcoal therapy is stopped. In summary, while the gut-brain connection has been proven, we still have to elucidate the exact mechanism for manipulating it. We do know instituting things like a casein and gluten-free diet are likely to be beneficial. We also know that pre and probiotics are likely to be beneficial. And there's no harm in added activated charcoal to the regimen. But most importantly, we know this is an exciting area of research and many more studies are needed to further define better pathways and regimens to provide optimum nutrition in this special population. Thanks for watching, guys. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up. If you want to show us some real support, subscribe. And stay tuned for our next video. Until then, aloha.